Hey, you guys. Welcome to the Big Promo Cast. Glad to have you back. This show, we like to highlight brands that use merch for marketing and promotions to give business owners and marketers some ideas for their own campaigns. We'd love it if you left a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, or even in a comment down below this video. I've got a few interesting things on the, on the uh, agenda this week. Our buddies at Miller High Life and Thai Bar have come back again for wedding season. Movie promotional popcorn buckets are a big deal all of a sudden. Trader Joe's has some merch news. Not all of it's good. And speaking of grocery stores, our buddies at Aldi have dropped their summer, I'm sorry, spring merch, merch line. And the fabulous Dolly Parton has teamed up with Lodge. It's fantastic. Let's talk about it. So our pals over at Miller High Life have done a collab with the Thai Bar. The Thai Bar is like a menswear website, all kinds of fancy stuff. A Thai Bar is like a thing to put in a necktie. So anyway, they have restocked the whole thing. They've introduced a couple of new items. Oh, this is designed to commemorate Miller High Life's 120th anniversary. Limited edition collection. Hmm. Limited edition. Looks like beer and fancy clothes. All right, cool. Cufflinks, those are cool. So when you get into here, it says the collection has 47 results. However, I can only find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine or ten of them. I mean, it's cool stuff, and it's really, you know, classy, whatever. There's a leather, liquid courage, leather koozie. I don't see any Miller branding on that whatsoever. Oh, you know what? It might be on the back. No, tie bar is on the back. So that's cool. The, the magic about all this stuff is that the branding is very subtle. It's not in your face, logos all over the place, which is kind of cool. They've got some champagne dress socks. I don't see a Miller logo anywhere on these at all, but it's got champagne bubbles. That's kind of cool. Champagne colored. Miller High Life cup links look like bottle caps. Those are cool. That's an expected thing. 20 bucks, not bad. The Miller High Life classic shield on a tie clip. That's kind of cool. A pocket square. Now, when you fold this up, you can't really tell what it says. When you open it, of course, it's got a big giant bucket of Miller High Life feature there and you know, all the colors and photography and everything else. But when you fold it up and put it in your pocket, you don't know it, that's all there. That's kind of cool. This little necktie, which is the same champagne color as the socks, kind of, with a tiny little image of the moon girl in the lower left corner. Another classy thing, classy move. Then, of course, they have a lapel pin, which is the girl in the moon lapel pin. It says it's silver, all right? And then there's a bow tie. And the bow tie, again, it's a black bow tie with stars all over it. And the girl in the moon is in a couple of places, but it's not in your face. Good for New Year's Eve, things like that. The last thing on here are the Girl in the Moon Midnight Navy dress socks. And again, her logo or the logo of her is just a little tiny thing on the ankle. There are stars all over it. And the Miller High Life tie bar branding is on the foot, under on the sole of the feet. So you'd have to take your shoes off and put your feet up for anybody to see it. So that's kind of cool. I like it when logos aren't in your face like that when it's not all over the place. The branding effort aims to be understated. It avoids the overtly... Miller High Life theme wedding ceremony. Like you're not going to have your wedding in a dive bar. Your old lady would never stand for that. Maybe she would. Depends on which trailer park you met her at. But anyway, the collaboration follows Miller High Life's branding strategy of knowing when to highlight their brand and when to keep it subtle. I'll tell you what, when they had that mobile dive bar, that was not subtle at all. Cornhole tables and the whole bar pull behind your car and all kinds of stuff. I'm a big fan of Miller High Life. Big, big fan. That's all I got for that one. Back in 2019, AMC and Disney. There was a Star Wars movie coming out, The Rise of Skywalker, maybe. I don't remember. But they came up with an R2-D2 popcorn bucket that had a drink holder. And it was pretty cool, but that kind of started this whole thing about movie popcorn buckets as collectibles. And now it's a big deal. Every movie, well, lots of movies, are coming up with a $25 to $50 bucket empty. Sometimes you can't even get it at the theater. It's kind of amazing. I found a bunch online and they're also all over ebay of course they're collectible and people don't unwrap them and they you know they don't use them so they maintain their collectible value they call them vessels and they have become a lucrative side business involving cinemas third-party vendors studios which get licensing fees examples include the fast x dom's charger popcorn bucket sold by amc theaters for 40 bucks guardians of the galaxy had the groot bucket taylor swift had her heiress tour bucket and cup combo 
Thor had the hammer. I think we did a story on that one. Ghostbusters is just coming out next couple of weeks. They've got one. In fact, they might have two. They've got the ghost trap. I think they have something else. Oh, they have a Slimer, of course. That's a big one. That's 40 bucks too. Top Gun Maverick has one. Wonka has one. The Barbie car has a cool one. Kung Fu Panda has a cool one. Disney Toy Story, Disney Cars. And of course, the Scream movie. I think we did a story about that one when that came out too. In the Dune Sandworm container, of course, you saw that SNL skit. That was kind of funny. Sorry, man. Okay. These are all over eBay for sale. The Ghostbusters thing hadn't even come out yet. And it's already it's already on on eBay. And you know, I don't know how they're getting away with that. Oh, there's another one, a Tim Green bucket and the Slimer bucket. There's the Kung Fu one still wrapped up. See when they're wrapped up, you can't really tell what they look like. But anyway, look, what was that down there? A Coca-Cola thing? Looks like a Coke truck. Oh, it's a Transformers Optimus Prime popped up bucket. Jeez Louise. They've got it all. And here is the car. Now, I didn't know that the car had one, that the Ghostbusters car had a popcorn feature. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe this is a knockoff. I don't know. Ecto-1, that's the license plate. Maybe. Anyway, the seller has 47 comments or whatever, 47 ratings. $65 ships from Virginia, thirteen fifty shipping. Hmm. Don't know if that's real or not. Maybe it is. Oh, here's another one. So, yeah. If you've got a couple of them, that means it's real. Anyway, so there you go. Popcorn buckets. Go to the movies. Pay your 15 bucks to get in the movies. Buy your $50 worth of popcorn. And get yourself a collectible. And you make your money back. It's kind of cool. You know, it's just another way for people to make money. It's, not, it's another way for movies to, you know, it's not like they're already soaking you for $15 sodas and $20 candy bars and everything else. Jeez Louise. Okay. That's all I have about movie popcorn buckets. I'll tell you what, people are crazy in the United States. I swear to God. Trader Joe's is a grocery store. It's just a grocery store. Nothing fancy about it. They have some quirky things. They have brands a lot of places don't have because they private label a lot of stuff. But people who love Trader Joe's love Trader Joe's. It's unbelievable the devotion they have and their fans have. So they came up with this mini tote bag. So just a little tote bag. It's little. It's, it's too little to use anyway. I mean, you can put your lunch in or whatever. It's not like something you, you wouldn't go to the grocery store and buy your week's worth of groceries and stick it in here. It's too small. But they came up with them, red, green, blue, and yellow. Watch these videos. Yes, the Trader Joe tote bag is a classic. It's big, it's sturdy, it's affordable. Now we have this miniature version that's only two ninety nine. I agree, this is an amazing deal, but is the mini Trader Joe's tote bag really worth rampaging shelves? We got the Trader Joe mini tote bag! These people are going nuts. Like, remember the Stanley thing when they put it for sale on Target and people were lined up at the door? Same thing. People are going crazy for these things. They only sell for $3, $2.99. People went in and bought the crap out of them. And now they're on eBay. Wait till you see this. $73.50 for a set of four. This guy down here has a brand new set of four. He wants $500 for his. I'm not even at the good part yet. Here's one for $30. This is realistic, I guess. A thousand dollars. Can you believe that? That guy ought to be. I probably shouldn't say that. Probably YouTube will probably take me down. But he sh he should at least not be able to put something for a thousand dollars. It's ridiculous. Due to high demand, some Trader Joe's stores have limited number of bags customers can purchase. Now, lucky me, my wife's brother's kid works at a Trader Joe's, so I was able to snag one just for this show. But I got to give it back. Pull this up so you can see a whole full picture of it. Green, lovely green. Not much to it, but I'll tell you what, if somebody were to offer me $1,000 for it, <laughs> I'd give it up. Sorry, kid. Here's your, here's your half. I think his employees are not supposed to do that, so that's probably smart. Um, and it says people are buying these. It's not that they're just putting them up for $1,000. People are actually buying them. It's crazy. And so, and that just goes to show you. 
people, you know, people are loyal to you or they're, I can't see that a thousand dollars for four bags is an investment. So people just want stuff and people are dumb. People are so dumb in the United States. It's crazy. Anyway, this says it's not confirmed if the bags are actually sold at these rates because eBay lets you do a, you know, best offer kind of thing. So who knows? I don't know. It's crazy. It just really highlights the power of, well, the power of social media. Not really. I guess it drives demand. I mean, influencers didn't do this. Trader Joe's just put, put out a product and people went crazy for it. It's nuts. But that's not the only thing Trader Joe's is doing in the merch business. There's some other fun stuff. You know, Trader Joe's employees are not typically unionized. But, well, a few of them are because, you know, especially in different areas of the country. So the Trader Joe's union came up with some workwear or whatever to promote their union. Well, they're using the Trader Joe's type to do that. And that's probably a no-no. Except, so Trader Joe's took the union to court for using their graphics or to use for using something like their graphics. And Trader Joe's, the union won. A judge threw the case out. They're saying the lawsuit was frivolous. Like, here's the tote bag with the Trader Joe's logo, and here's what the union, Trader Joe's United Union, looks like with a fist in the air. And I don't know if it's dollar bills or what. I can't tell what it's holding. I mean, their, you know, their website is for, it's for everybody in the Trader Joe's whatever world. You can join the crew or whatever. I don't know how the trade, I don't know how, the, how it works. I don't even have to do the whole store if you can just sign up and do it. And their merch isn't bad. I mean, it's okay. It's shirts and mugs and tote bags and whatever. The only thing I really see that's in their face is this round circle logo that, oh, that's got a rainbow. What's, what is in this guy's hand? I can't really tell. There's a hoodie design that says unions ring my bell. I don't know if that's a thing that has to do with Trader Joe's or not. I'm not really familiar with it. What does this one say? Trader Joe's United Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a box cutter. Perfect. So the Trader Joe's United Circular Seal, I guess, has a fist holding a box cutter. So that makes sense. But Trader Joe's tried to sue this union and the union won. The court indicated that the lawsuit appeared to be an attempt by Trader Joe's to undermine union organizing efforts, which began in 2022 due to safety concern. Hmm. The union has won several store elections despite facing some unsuccessful attempts and alleged retaliation from the chain. Not supposed to do that. People want to unionize. You got to let them do it. I don't know, man. When I was in the union, I worked for an airline. I was not a fan because it's all based on seniority. Everything you do is based on seniority, not performance. I could run circles around those old men putting bags on planes. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Those guys would take naps for two hours right in the middle of their shift. Didn't make any damn difference. Don't get me started in unions. And I was the one that got laid off. They kept their, they all kept their jobs. Those lazy old men. Anyway. Or I should probably stop. I'm going to piss off a lot of people. I am a liberal, liberal Democrat, but I am not a fan of unions. Anyway, that was that. Speaking of grocery stores, our buddies at Aldi. Aldi's a grocery store. Not, I don't want to say it's a discount grocery store, but they're smaller. They're not like a big box giant grocery store. They have a limited selection too. But they have just dropped a line of merch as well. You know, they were famous for, I think last year or the year before, they made up a a line of clothing called Aldidas, which is a play on the word Adidas. And they got kind of in trouble for it. Like, but they made a lot of news. So anyway, now they're back and they are about to launch this. Well, about to nothing. They've launched it. A $13 pair of sneakers. And look what I got. I went down to the store and I picked them up. They're right there. And they had some of every size. I got these for my, my old lady and they're about her size. We'll see if they work. But for 13 bucks, who knows? And they look great and they feel solid. And they got red soles on them. They've got, I don't know if they're leather. Well, they can't be leather for $13. Maybe they are. Who knows? They feel like solid shoes, like Nike's or Reeboks or Adidas or whatever. But they, uh, you know, you can see they've got the logo on the sole. They've got the logo on the tongue. They've got the logo on the side. They've got all these Aldi colors. Came in this fantastic box. Branded box that has you know, it's full color all over it. Recycled materials, it says. All day comfort, durable sole. Memory foam in sock. So I guess if it was leather, it wouldn't be recycled, right? I guess that makes sense. But anyway, but they had all kinds of stuff there. Um, it wasn't displayed really well. I'm here at Aldi, and here's their stuff. Sneakers, you can't even see them, they're in those boxes. Here's the belt bags, but everything here is on the bottom shelf. Nondescript. 
Prices are good. There's some stuff up here on the top shelf, but it's all kind of in disarray, man. Nobody's paying attention to this area. Mixed in with the Hot Wheels and the Cabbage Patch Barbies and all this junk. It's like an afterthought. Anyway, at least they got it. I guess that's something. Here at a different store. At least this is all kind of in the same department. Starts with the shoes there in the middle. You got sweatshirts, you got stuff on top, little belt bags, keychains, tumblers, hats. So at least it's all it's still kind of a mess, but that's because people go frantic for this stuff. There's nothing like Trader Joe's at all. So those cool little keychains. They didn't have any bucket hats in that other store. All these fun socks. Pet stuff. Come on, man. But this release is just part of Aldi's larger spring line. And it also has stuff like there's sweatpants, there's socks. Oh, I got her some socks too. Sorry. I got to show you the socks I got her. Two pairs of socks. Socks were $5, I think. And the shoes were 13 It's unbelievable how cheap this stuff is. They had bucket hats in stock. They had the keychains in stock that hold a quarter. I couldn't see how to hold a quarter in it, but it didn't matter. If you don't know the thing, at Aldi, if you get a shopping cart, you have to put a quarter in. And then when you bring your cart back, you get your quarter back. So there's people that don't hang around at Aldi and collect carts and take them back for the quarters. But anyway, if you didn't know that, now you know. But they had baseball hats, bucket hats, this belt bag. They had all this stuff. A pet sweatshirt. People go crazy with that stuff. Anyway, but this thing says any company can become a fashion brand with the right logo decoration. You know, and people, fans are nuts. Uh, I think in Europe, this is a much bigger deal than it is in the U.S. Because like I said, I went to these stores. I went to two stores around here. It looked like junk, man. And one store, all the stuff was on the bottom shelf on this aisle called Aldi Finds. And it's the end of the day, maybe about 7 o'clock. So maybe maybe they'll fresh this, freshen the shelves up all day. Because it looked pretty picked over. I mean, it had it was full. It wasn't like it was barren. But it looked like it had been shopped. It was uh, it was messy. Things were all over the place. The other store I went to wasn't much better. And there wasn't any signage that said, you know, here's our new much line or whatever. It wasn't nothing fancy. It was just stuck in with everything else. So, yeah, it's a fun and affordable way for Aldi to engage with customers by offering a range of branded merch. And if you're an Aldi fan and you want some cheap sneakers, man, there you go. You could not go wrong with that. I'm not a fan of Aldi because I just I don't ever go there because they're not really in my neighborhood. I guess I would. Maybe I should. Got to get some quarters, though. See, that was another thing. I've tried to shop there once. I didn't have any quarters. To, so you didn't have a shopping cart. So you had to walk around. So I was limited in what I could buy. Wasn't a fan of that either. Friction, man. No friction. No good. Our buddy Dolly Parton. Man, she is all over the place. She's fantastic. Remember we talked about that Yeti cast iron skillet that was 400 bucks? I guess a lot of play on my YouTube channel. Well, our buddy Dolly has come up with a her own cast iron collection. Four different pans that are reasonably priced, if you can believe it. There is a 13-inch, a 10-and-a-half-inch, a 12-inch, a and a little small one that's like the size of, well, they say it's for a small piece of cornbread or an individual serving of cornbread, but shaped like a guitar. It's kind of cool. I guess you could buy them all individually. They don't have like a set that you buy. Yeah, but the 13 one has a picture of her. The 12 has the butterfly, which is a song she's famous for. The 10 and a half inch has a, oh, it looks like a picture of her with a butterfly flying in her face. A big butterfly on a guitar. There's a little guitar shape with Dolly and a butterfly. So anyway, there you go. <laughs> she also released a cookbook coming out in September. So anyway, these cast irons are awesome. And they're made by Lodge, which is fantastic because Lodge is a great brand of cast iron. It's not a gazillion dollars like Butter Pad or whatever. 
and it's not an extra 50 bucks because it has Yeti on it, which is crazy. Prices range from $22.95 for the mini skillet to $54.95 for the big one, which is perfectly reasonable, especially when it's a licensed product. This is used to inspire family gatherings and memorable moments to these kitchenware collections. Wasn't that sweet? Here's the other thing she did, though, and it's completely got bias. She had this baking mix stuff with Duncan Hines. She had a line of baking mixes, and in the complete set, you got a spatula. I, don't, I forget what else you get. We have a video about that, too. But she did again. She added some different mixes. And the mixes that she has now are like a cake and a, a chocolate cake, a blueberry muffin. The other one had cornbread and all kinds of stuff. But this one comes with an oven mitt, four different mixes, a magnet or a sticker, three Dolly keepsake recipe cards, and a special note from Dolly. <laughs> As if she's going to write you a note. Eh, maybe she would. Who knows? Free delivery. And the whole set's only 40 bucks. So you get the four mixes and the mitt. All in a fancy box and a note from Dolly for 40 bucks. Not too shabby. So Yeti, get with the times. These fans want to buy stuff. They want to buy stuff, but they don't want to get soaked. Man, it's crazy. Anyway, that's all I have for Dolly. That's all I got for this one this time, friends. If you like to tell your friends, if you didn't like it, tell your friends. Thanks for watching, y'all. YouTube's going to show you one more video. Sorry. How's it? Over here? It's over here. Thanks for watching, y'all. YouTube's going to show you two more videos right here. Pick one of those. <laughs> what a mess. What a deal. End.